So today we are going to finish our, let's say, conversation on the heuristic evaluation that, as I was saying last time, you are going to use uh, it next week, next Thursday, I think, um, for evaluating your paper prototypes. Uh, and we stopped basically here. Uh, we, we just concluded with these, these slides about Nielsen proposing 10 heuristics that we are going to cover quite quickly, I would say, because it's they are not really different, not so much different from the guidelines that you already have analyzed, so just not to repeat it too, mu too much the same, the same things, the same concept. Uh, but we will obviously go through all the heuristics. And how an heuristic evaluation works, I have already told you last time, exemplifying, but let's go through this in a more structured way. Mm -hmm. So first of all, there is a sort of uh, pre-evaluation training. Mm -hmm. So the creator of the application of the prototype, uh, whatever it is, gives the evaluator, mm -hmm. that again is doing the evaluation individually, give the evaluator information about the domain and the scenario to be evaluated. Mm? Sometimes the task that the evaluator can do. Mm? So if, you're, if the, the user interface, the prototype is about uh, medici medicine, it gives the evaluator the knowledge to understand the domain in which the, the user interface is located. Mm? Or if there is something for novice user or for expert user, be some video recording equipment that are particular, not general particles. So it gives background, a bit of background about the domain, not about how the, the prototype, the system, the interface work, but more about, again, the domain and the context mm, in which the interface is and the system is located. Then the uh, evaluator start the actual evaluation individually, so one evaluator at a time, and indeed, uh, and check mm, according to these ten heuristics the, the problems that uh, the evaluator is able to see. After checking all the problems, the evaluator gives a severity rating. Mm? First, individually, mm, so agreeing with uh, himself or herself. Okay, this is severe. This is important. This is something to be fixed as soon as possible. This is something that is nice to have, but it could be fixed uh, two months in a row. Uh, and the evaluator is doing this individually at first, but then also meet with the others evaluator and try to consolidate the list of issues and to consolidate the severity rating for all the issues. Mm -hmm. So maybe one evaluator at the beginning say, okay, this problem that met uh, that violates the risk number three is actually uh, very important as a problem, but speaking with uh, the other two evaluators, they discover that maybe it's not so important, a little bit less, so they agree on a different severity rating hmm? because they have different perspective on the issue at hand. And finally, after they have individual list of issues according to the heuristic and the individual severity rating, together with the list that they put together plus the severity rating of the list that they put together with all the evaluation from all the evaluators, they will do a sort of debriefing. Mm? So they will give these, all these issues, all this comment to the design team. Mm? So to, to the group in our case that is developing the, the paper prototype or the prototype, and they will explain, add more information, clarify something that they wrote, just to have the other group to understand better the issue at hand and now possibly to solve them. Mm? So they are doing their work with expert, but the idea is not to criticize a uh, system just to, to because it's nice to find issues in the other work, but just to, but really to help mm, the creator of the prototype of the system to do a better job. Mm? So it's, it's more, you know, uh, one way to help the other to create something more uh, more useful, more more nice, and with less problem. 
so how the evaluation work? So this is the overall process, but how the evaluation work? So the evaluator, as I said before, start with a sort of background of what the uh, interface of the system is, and it may or may not receive a set of tasks, a set of actions, a set of paths to be explored with the prototype of the system. Mm. That could be more or less uh, wide, mm, maybe in your paper prototype, they will be sort of restricted according to the path that the paper prototype will allow you to do while maybe in a uh, working uh, system, maybe deployed in the wild, it, they will be something less structured or more uh, tasks because the, the system is more is implemented, the feature of the system are more implemented. Then for each task, for each of these path of navigation through the interface, the evaluator should step through the design of the single page, a single portion of the page, several times and inspect the user interface thinking and reading actually, hmm, they will have, you will have the list of the 10 listing on paper so you can read them and inspect the UI, the UI element that could be again on real design or preliminary prototype like yours and for each page, for each step of, of for each portion of the design, first of all the evaluator gets a general feeling of how things are, how the flow is, how these paths are smooth or not. Mm, so I, I reach this page easily or not. I, there is something that is disturbing me looking at this for any reason that maybe is not clear yet or it seems everything great. Mm. So after getting a first feeling, a first overview, they focus on specific elements. Okay, is this button good? Is the label in this button good? Is the position in this button in the page good? Is this other menu here appropriate? Not, not according to their own general, uh, you, you say, perspective or feeling, opinion, but clearly according to the uh, heuristic, mm, the heuristic, the criteria that the, the evaluator is, is having in front of him. Mm. And he can do this, the evaluator can do this for every, uh, should do this for every uh, heuristic separately. Mm? So heuristic number one, general feeling, it's fitting or not the heuristic, yes, no, maybe, why? And um, okay, uh, let's me focus on this part that seems more troublesome and let's get to analyze better this part according to this heuristic. Then second heuristic, it doesn't apply, no. It doesn't uh, reapply the second heuristic here because everything is good. Let's move to the third heuristic, etc., etc. Et mm? So this is something that you, the, the evaluator needs to do for every page, for every, let's say, element or part of element or part of the page in the user interface. Mm? And heuristic are used as a reminder mm, of things to look for. So if one is really expert, maybe don't need a list of heuristic in front of him uh, or her, but uh, Maybe for, for getting started, it's good to have that as a reminder or as a, as a guide for actually doing the evaluation. Important to note that in the heuristic evaluation, also other type of problem can be reported. Mm. So you go through the 10 heuristics, you notice a series of problem, and then you also notice something that is not really a problem with those heuristics. It's something else, but you notice, so you want to you want to highlight that, to report that to the design team, to, to the other group in your case. Mm? So in that case, you will not wrote down also that issue, like uh, saying that this is not part of the ten heuristics, but is something more mm, that you came up with while redoing, doing this, this review. Mm? Uh, then again, this is what do the, the evaluator, in the, the team that is doing evaluator, there will be the evaluator for sure, there will be the person that is introducing the, the prototype, the system gives the background information as we said before at the beginning and then there may also be observer, hmm? other people that stay there and observe what happens with the evaluator and take notes hmm? so that the observer may provide also clarification for something that happens during the evaluation. This is especially important if maybe if the domain is particular and, and the expert is not the evaluator, is not an expert of that domain. Mm? So it's an expert of user interface, of human-computer interaction, 
but is not an expert on medicine, is not an expert on aerospace, is not an expert on the domain in which the interface is located in. So in that case, an observer can say, okay, this is, this was uh, some uncle unclear things here around this action, but this unclarity is mostly because the evaluator is not expert and this doesn't, didn't recognize the word, the framing of the page, the narration that there is in the page, but an expert, it's expected to see, an expert in aerospace or medicine is expected to see those things in front of him because it's, it's usual for this person to have this information and with this level of detail. Hmm? So the observer can provide additional context and can get the um, evaluation results in, in a different light, let's say, with respect to the single comments of the evaluator. Uh, aneuristic evaluation typically all in uh, lasts between one hour and two hours, hmm? if done very, very well. So going through the general page and then every single detail of the page and then another page, hmm? uh, also according to how big is the, the system to, to evaluate. And as I said before, each evaluator should then provide a list of the problem, of usability problem that stem from the evaluation according to these 10 uh, heuristics, these 10 criteria. Uh, by saying that not only the problem, I've noticed this, but also saying which heuristic that problem, that issue, that things violate. So the, this pro the, level, the level in, this, the, in, the, in that button is not okay. Why this, this, and that? And this violates heuristic number one. Hmm? So it's not, I don't like the button. It, it's the button is a problem because heuristics say this. Hmm? So it's not a uh, feeling or I don't like the color, but it's something that is more reasoned and motivated according to some specific, again, heuristic. And then each problem are clearly reported separately with the um, severity ranking. Mm. And together with the, the problem, the list of the heuristic that the problem uh, violates, and, and the problem could also violate more than one heuristic. Mm. Maybe there is a problem with visibility and another problem, and these maybe are two separate heuristics. So it's fine if one problem is violates heuristics. And together with this, uh, the evaluator should also note where the, the problem is. If it's just, again, a button in the left corner of the user interface in one single page, or if it's something that say, okay, this button that currently in, in page one is in the top corner on the right, in the next page move in another corner. So clearly the problem is more related the not the single page the single button the single page but the parallel between the two different page that should have for coherency the same button in the same place not having a button moving around mm. um, or problem with the overall structure the layout let's say of the uh, user interface or with the flow of navigation so I'm going from page one to page two but there is some missing information there are some things that, strange things that happens, etc. cetera. Mm. So it could be very, very specific. Again, the label in this button is as a problem or parallel between different parts of the, the user interface or more general problem or um, something that is missing. Mm. And in this case, especially in your case, in the paper prototype, maybe something that is missing is fine because it's a prototype and it's a paper so maybe it's uh, some approximation. You will not have pictures. So an evaluator could say, okay, this picture is not clear, but you maybe will have just a big X on the page. So clearly it's not clear, the, the picture is not clear because there is no picture uh, actually in, uh, in the paper prototype. And that comment could be a comment that came up from a risk evaluation and that you see and say, okay, right, not a problem because clearly we will have a picture there and so we can easily solve this, this we will automatically solve the, uh, the this heuristic violation because we will put a picture there clearly mm? or maybe some text that's missing and so uh, just this could be considered point of attention mm? 
to keep in mind, okay, I need a picture there, but it's not, there cannot be a random picture, but it should be a, a good picture because the evaluator not needs, notice that there is a need of a clear picture there, hmm? just to, to make an example. So these are the kind of things that the problem uh, that you can, can find, and then also there is the severity rating. So the other question, let's, uh, uh, so we, we are going to use these hmm? uh, in the lab for your prototype, as I said last time, uh, we don't have, we plan to do all the evaluation in one hour and a half, that is, sorry, this is sort of compatible with this time listed here, hmm? because we have one hour and a half, but we are going to do two evaluation. Hmm? So they will be deep, but also consider that your paper prototype are not so big, they don't have 100 different pages and 100 different tasks to be done on it. Uh, the time, one hour and a half should be enough for doing two user, two uh, risk evaluation per group. Um, and we will share a template for uh, online document for sharing the, mm, the results of the heuristic so that the evaluator can also polish the, the results at home and you can always see because it's online. You don't need to be there and receive the evaluation in paper if, if you're late, let's say. But this is for us and we set a number of evaluators for you. But in general, outside of a university course, uh, this can be uh, used this is used, actually, and the question is, well, the process is quite simple. You have 10 heuristics, you have some things to, to evaluate, to check for on the paper prototype, on a wireframe, or an interactive prototype, on Photoshop uh, images, or on a real system, etc. How many evaluators do you need? So this is something that uh, Nielsen explored quite a lot to, to try to say, okay, which is the good number? How many evaluators do we need? Three is enough? 20, 100? Which is the good number for having uh, um, a, a good cover coverage of the issues, of the problems, uh, but without spending three months doing a heuristic evaluation? Because otherwise we could have a, a user testing instead, a usability testing instead of the heuristic evaluation if we need to bring in 30 different people. So uh, Nielsen did uh, an experiment, and so it, it has a, a user interface uh, with some problems, usability problems, uh, some known, some not well known, and that are listed here. Mm? So it says this, this user interface has 16 overall usability problem, may have 16 overall usability problem, and it got 19 evaluators. And first of all, it, it found that uh, the easiest problem are basically get by almost everybody. Hmm? The things here in this, in, this oh, in this part of the picture. Hmm? Uh, and that there are also some art usability problem that are catched by somebody, not by everybody. Hmm? And without a clear pattern, maybe this one found this issue, but didn't found this. That is instead found by this other evaluator, but that it didn't find this other issue. So different evaluator have some overlap in the easy part, but um, there is a great amount of non-overlapping between these evaluator. And also among performances, some evaluator find way more problem than others. Mm, and these are more or less the same expert evaluator. So the first evaluator here find quite a lot of problem with respect to this here in the top. They just find three e the three easiest problem ever in the user interface. So this, uh, this, this clearly makes some reflection hmm? uh, because he recruited quite, quite a lot of evaluators and even knowing how many usability problem you have, no evaluator wi wi is able to find all of them. And even the best, hmm? even the best one finds only ab around one third of all the usability problem in a, in a user interface. So this could say, it's not just a number for our main evaluator, because here we have nine 19, and we didn't have a 100% coverage, not even uh, close to 100% coverage of uh, issues. So if, if take, make another experiment, um, and well, we, we are not going to see the 
this the, 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 the formula, but the idea is that it tried to put on a graph the number evaluator and the proportion of usability problem found in a user interface. Hmm? And what uh, Nielsen discovered is that, well, if you have zero evaluator, you don't have coverage or usability problem, clear. But as soon as you start having some people, you notice that there is a quite good, um, quite linear, let's say, uh, movement towards up hmm, for the evaluator. So with five evaluator, you cover 75% of the uh, usability problem in a user interface. Uh, so you say, fine, five, it's 75%, maybe 10 will cover way more, I will double the people, I would like to hope to double the coverage. And as pictured also before, this is not true. Hmm? With more evaluator, five more evaluator, you just move from 75 to 80, more or less, 82. So there is double the people, but a small uh, percentage of the increasing. And with 15 evaluator, you move, again, a little bit up, but, again, not a lot. Hmm? From uh, 82, you maybe are around 85, 87, 90. So there is an increase in coverage, for sure. Um, but hmm, you are make having three times the, the original set of five uh, evaluators. So with five evaluator, you got three quarter, basically, of the issues. And then you need other 10 evaluator, three times the number, just to have an increase of 20%. Mm. Uh, so if we can have a lot of evaluator, this is good, because at a certain point, we will have so many evaluator that will not overlap, that at a certain point, we will reach not 100%, but maybe 95, 94% of the, of the issues found. But then there is another perspective in general. Mm? There is the cost, the benefit. Mm? So if I'm, I'm a company and I have to do this for my system, my, my user interface, my application, uh, there is a cost in bringing in, in terms of money, but also in terms of time and efforts for bringing in 20 people instead of bringing in five people. Mm. So uh, plotting these according to this cost, mm. they could be fixed like time, like cost, but also some money that you give to the evaluators to came here and do the evaluation. Mm. So you are spending money. Uh, Nielsen found that the, the good number mm, to cover quite a lot of issues and not uh, spending too much, not so the, the right amount of benefit, mm, the, the, the ratio cost benefit is around having three to five evaluator. Mm. And we see here that three to five evaluator actually are getting uh, between 50 and 75% of the issues overall. That is quite a lot mm, for having five people in a room uh, going through 10 heuristics and checking what, what you did in one hour then clearly there will be other things to, to fix, clearly. But maybe you also add some other problem while fixing this 75%. Mm? And, and for this, you can have another round of heuristic evaluation, you can have uh, usability testing, you can have other kind of evaluation, other kinds of the processes set up for covering the other kind of issue. But with five people, you already cover, let's say 75%. That is already a good number and you don't spend too much in general, money and time, to have this done. Mm? Because again, in one hour you probably, or three hour, you probably complete everything. And you can move on and try to fix immediately. So let's say after one day, you can modify your system and having 75% of the issues fixed, possibly fixed, or at least highlighted. Mm? So the magic number, let's say for heuristic evaluation, from that picture is basically three to five. Mm. So if you are doing an uh, heuristic evaluation, an expert evaluation in the wild, in, in the real world with a company with, um, not, well not in this course clearly, you 
you just need three to five people. Mm? It is also easy to convince your boss that you can do that because I just need three people coming in. I don't need to set up a room. I don't need to recruit 30 different people in my target population. I just need to find three professional uh, user experience people and bring them in for one hour, for one day, for half a day. Mm? So not a, not a lot of time, not a lot of money, not a lot of effort. Mm? This is also helping in some companies to accept this kind of thing. Mm? So don't, don't forget that uh, last time we said that this was also called discount usability, also for, for this, because it's easier and quick to do with respect to usability testing on other kind of testing that involve end users. Uh, then we said the evaluator, so we have this three to five evaluator doing this evaluation, and they also have this severity ranking. Uh, that we say the severity is something that an evaluator should say this problem is important, is urgent to be fixed, etc. Uh, but Nielsen tried to uh, define a little bit better this severity ranking uh, with the idea that we need to allocate most resources to fix the most serious problem. And we need to understand if we need more effort, if we need another test, because there are really serious, important problem or not, or it's fine, we can fix them. So according to Nielsen, and here there is a link, if you want to read more, uh, severity is a combination of frequency, impact, and persistence. Mm? So is the problem, frequency, is the problem that happens common? It happens on every single page of your application, or the rare, maybe it's just in one page that you go there once in a lifetime. Mm? Uh, impact of the problem if it occurs mm? for the user, for the end user, that you the, the target population. Is the problem easy to solve for the user or it blocks the user there and it cannot proceed or I don't know how to proceed and need to call the, the service the assistance to get unstuck. And the third factor is persistent. Mm. It's one time, mm, something that maybe just happened during the registration phase. So one time problem, or it's something that happens every single time you open your application. Or clearly something in the middle, mm, something that could happen one time, all the time, or maybe in some part of the process that is repeated five times, ten times, mm, there is clearly a, a degree mm, of uh, a, a scale between happens once and happen always. Mm. This is, is true for frequency, impact, uh, and persistent, clearly. So the evaluator should give a severity rating according to these three criteria, frequency, impact, and persistent, and then also, as I said before, the evaluator came together and give a combined severity rating, mm? starting from the individual, clearly, severity rating. And Nielsen defined a severity scale going to zero to from zero to four, where zero is no problem. Uh, that is maybe for really minor things, really, really minor things. Uh, that maybe it typically is not used for the individual evaluation because it's not a problem. I probably don't write it down, but for the combined, it could be. Maybe the combined evaluation, one evaluator say, this is a problem to me, and the other two say, it's not. Mm? So they end up saying, okay, I listed it, this because it's a, it was actually found by one evaluator. So it's fine to, to list that, but the severity is zero because the majority of us think that we agree that this is not a problem. Mm? And so you probably can skip it. Then one is cosmetic problem. Okay, if you have extra time, fix it. It's easy, probably. But I if you just have extra time, don't focus, don't start from problem with severity one. Then severity two, minor usability problem. Mm? Okay. This should be fixed, but not high priority. Start with the three and then move back to two. And, and only if you have extra time and you are in the mood, fix 
problem with severity with one. Hmm? Three major usability problem. They are important to fix. They need to be fixed. So high priority problem to be fixed. And four that hopefully uh, nobody is going to use often is usability catastrophe. Hmm? So it, this is something that you must be fixing. So you, you if you have to do one thing in that day is to fix this with severity number four. So it's really something that you cannot go. Hmm? So probably something that has a high frequency, high persistence and high impact. And that happen, happens every, every time, block the users when it happens and, and happens in every page. So you really need to fix that because you cannot ship a user interface with this with problem with rating like four. Okay, again, thinking always about fre frequency, persistence, and impact. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, this, this is saying the combined severity rating. So again, each evaluator gives a severity rating that they then after all the evaluator completed the evaluation, they met and say, okay, I found this, do you find that? Yes, no. And if you find that, what, even if not actually, what do you want to give as a rating, it's fine. My original rating. Do you want to change it, uh, etc.? And sometimes what happens is either agreeing. So I give to one problem one. You give to one pro to the same problem two, and the other person give to the problem zero. So we can discuss. It's one, it's two, or it's zero, or it's four. No, zero is not one, two, or four. What is the the number they put there? We can discuss and reach an agreement if we are able to. The other things that typically is done is just to compute the average. I give one, two, and four, let's make the average and put there, round the average and put there the average. Mm. But important, the group, uh, the uh, design team will receive both the individual mm, evaluation, so you will see the team, we will see the individual rating and also the overall rating. So he knows that the teams knows that what happens, mm, why there is three written there. Mm. If it's an agreement, if all of you gave three or it was more stark differences in the rating. A and finally, the briefing. Mm. So all the evaluator completed, all the evaluation uh, done this combined and then gave that to, to the team and the team, if you if they want, can ask maybe some question or give uh, have some clarification like, uh, and then especially start to think also without the evaluator if they want, how we can fix it. And if you are in a company, how much will it cost to fix it? Again, in, in terms of time and uh, money. Mm. And this moment with the evaluator could be also used for brainstorm other general design idea. Mm, maybe there are some something that is problematic and uh, that emerge from the, the, the evaluation and the team can discuss with the expert. They have the expert there in the room. They have three, five experts there. Why not use the time to get other information from these people that have seen and, and tried the, 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 the user interface? Uh, we, we will see this clearly also later during the course, but which is different between the heuristic evaluation and an actual user testing. Well, we have seen that the heuristic evaluation is faster. Uh, results are pre-interpreted because it's the expert to say, look, this is a problem. The label there is a problem. Mm? It pointed yeah, out a specific problem and maybe also an, uh, a solution because if the label is wrong, maybe the evaluator is also able to suggest other possible good enough uh, alternative for that button. Uh, could generate false positive and might miss some problems. We have seen that in the picture. It's not a full coverage. The user testing is more accurate by definition because you have actual user, your target population, you have actual task that your target population is already doing uh, but you need to develop software, you need to prepare the setup, you need to recruit more people, so there is a, a different amount of uh, effort to do that. Mm? And we will see this later in the course. And they are not mm, one versus the other 
they are they are actually complementary methods it's not mandatory to do one or the other you can do both at different stage or at the same stage of development because they actually find different problem and allow you don't waste participants because in the usability test in the user testing you will need participants from your target population while in the other you need experts mm? so you can it, there are two groups of people totally different sometimes often often at least so you can also alternate the methods, maybe some stage doing the heuristic evaluation, in other the user testing, and then after user testing, another round fix things that emerge and do another round of heuristic evaluation to check if the fixing doesn't introduce other problem, etc. Mm. So most of the methods that we have seen are not really exclusive. You can combine them, you can do them one after the other, or vice versa. This is not something that is excluded so in the rest of the the time today we are going to understand heuristic uh, usability heuristic so the process that now we, we need to discover these 10 heuristics so that the evaluator the experts that will be you uh, will be able to apply them to the user interface of the uh, the other groups uh, we will go, I would say, quite fast on this, uh, partially because it's they are have big overlap with um, the guidelines and then the theory that you already have seen. You will notice, uh, so like matching the mental model, visibility of the system, documentation on DELT. It shouldn't be something really strange and new now in the course. But also, if you need a short recap of these heuristics, uh, these in the, in the website they are listed with more in the website of Nielsen the Nielsen normal group they are listed with some example with some additional information so you, you can also read that before doing the actual heuristic evaluation as a recap and there is also made by the same people 10 short yes 10 short videos one per each heuristic evaluation on YouTube made by the Norman Nielsen group and are very short videos, two minutes, three minutes videos that explain hmm, with these ladies, I would say, yes, um, all the heuristics. Hmm. With other example, they are not so different from the, um, the website, but uh, clearly these different format. One is 10 videos, so in, let's say, 20 minutes, you see all the videos. And probably in less time you read everything, but they are different medium. Mm. So this could be useful for a recap, maybe before, just before doing the, the day before, the afternoon before doing the actual heuristic evaluation. Mm. Just a, a recap that is uh, different than just looking at the slides or these one hour, three hour long videos. So these are the 10 heuristics. Mm. And as I was saying, you uh, will have, mm, during your heuristic evaluation, the list of the heuristics in front of you. So you don't have to remember all of them by memory. And as you see, mm, there are some topics that already were mentioned multiple times during the course. Visibility of the system status, match between system and the real world, mm, matching the mental model of the user and the mental model of the system, basically. User control, consistency, Error prevention, recognition rather than recall. Mm? You have already met that a few weeks ago. Uh, flexibility and efficiency of use. Then there is also a guideline about aesthetics and design. So more on the, the nice part. Mm? Uh, that will probably apply a little bit less to your paper prototypes. You see it's, it's done by hand and it's all only white and black, black and white. Mm? Then help the user recognize diagnosis and recover from errors mm? and then help and documentation mm? so most of these are not actually new right mm? and these are the title of the heuristics and this will give for each title a description so the heuristic is visibility of system status but the description that is very short and is given by nielsen is the system 
should always keep user informed abo about what's going on through appropriate feedback within a reasonable time. Mm? So if you look at, at us your user interface as an evaluator, you should think, okay, what, is, what about the visibility? Mm? If I'm filling out a form on my in a multi-step process, I know where, in which stage of the form I am, I know how long is the form, is the process. Mm? If I make something wrong, I receive, a f or good, I receive an appropriate f feedback in a reasonable time. If I submit a form and I just stay in the page for 10 minutes, is this a violation of the, of the guideline? Probably yes, mm? because I don't receive a feedback in a reasonable time. If I'm pressing submit, I should receive a feedback. If the website really needs 10, time, 10 minutes for <coughs> submitting the information, I should see waiting, please wait 10 minutes or add something that tell me it's not stuck. You don't have to close the browser. You just need to wait because we need 10 minutes for the I don't know what. Mm? But this is all about visibility. Mm? So title and description, and you should keep in mind this and try to look in the page, in the portion of the page, in the overall layout, if this is uh, violated or not, and how much is violated or not, mm? with the severity rating that we uh, said before. And these are three examples mm, of visibility. Four, actually, four examples of visibility. Uh, the first one is saying uh, mm, this one is showing you a progress, maybe a certain point will change, but it's showing you, once you upload the file, it's showing you a process, mm, how long it takes to upload the file. So when the bar is complete, it's done. It's feedback. Mm. Same things for picnic. Mm. With there is this bar increasing, and there is also, a, in this case, not really useful, but nice, let's say, uh, sentence, fluffing clouds, whatever they mean. Um, this is a confirmation. You change the password. Uh, no, you, you ask for your password, and your password has been emailed. Hmm? So maybe don't, don't email password, but uh, independently from that, th it's the message. The action that you have requested is completed, and is completed successfully. You asked for a password in the mail. We shouldn't have provided that to you, but since we have, we emailed your password. And we say, yes, we done. We have done. So check you the user know which is the next step to do. Check the email for the password or for the link to reset the password. And similar here, hmm? type the password and the strength of the password. The password is strong, is not strong. There are color, there are uh, letter, there are words that say, how strong is the password, and you also have suggestion. Mm? The passwords should be case sensitive and with six charter minimum. Mm? So if you write less than six char charter, probably you, you see a feedback that will tell you that this is a problem. Mm? Maybe this password strength will be red with some other uh, word in, in the between that is not strong. So you have visibility. You know the page or a portion of the page, what is happening and where you are. If you are waiting, if the system is waiting for you, and which is the next step, check your email. Uh, so the feedback mm, could be, as uh, we see in this, in this picture, very different, could be time. Mm, you still need three minutes. Your computer is installing an update. You need, it, it will last again one hour. Mm, so you have an estimate or what it takes, more or less. It could be feedback about space. Mm? Your storage is full. Your storage is 90%, so that you, you know that you cannot add anything else. And if you try to add anything else, if your storage is full, it gives you an error, but there is visibility, mm? there is feedback. Uh, change. Mm? When you request something, ensure that the user is aware. Mm? If you press the Save button, somewhere, you should see something that change when something's saved or not. Mm? If you think on Google Drive, on Google Docs, 
and it's saved automatically, it's say on the top of the page, saved on drive, mm? or it's currently saving, it gives a message. A small message, not a big window of interrupting you. It's subtle feed feed feedback, but it's still feedback. Uh, feedback could be also action. What is happening? I'm running, I'm fluffing clouds, like picnic. Mm? And this could be also be done in a redundant way. Mm? Maybe there is the picture, maybe there is the text, mm? maybe there is the icon that's changing. Mm? Could be done multiple times, again, without disrupting or interrupting the user, mm? but giving feedback. Next step, check your email. Mm? Click here to do that. And completion, okay, you have done, you have submitted the form. Click here to go to the home page. Or you can close the window mm, or the tab or whatever. And feedback about time could be tricky. Mm? So when you need uh, a bar that is completing, for instance, for time. So the roll of time is this one. If the execution time is less than one second, don't bother to put to show a bar that is completing. If it's less than one second, just show the outcome. We, we didn't notice if, if 50, 50, 500 uh, millisecond run. We, we cannot notice as human. We just see the next thing, which is less than one minutes, one second. If it's around one, two seconds, show feedback that the action is underway. Maybe you don't need fancy animation, but say, Okay, saving, mm, for instance. If it's more than two, three seconds, then you need to show progress. Mm, you need to show a bar that is filling up. Mm, the, per the percentage, the estimate time to completion, something more mm, than not, I'm saving. Mm, because in for the around one, two second, if you look at I'm saving, probably these one, two seconds are passed. And so th it's the document saved. So this is just a rule of thumb, but works most of the time. About time, clearly. Heuristic number two. Match between system and the real world. Same old, same old. The system should speak the user language with word, phrases, and concepts familiar to the target user of the system red rather than system-oriented term. Follow real world convention, making information appear in a natural and logical order. Mm? Use familiar metaphor and languages. And again, these familiar metaphor and languages can be metaphor from the real world or me messages that we have learned because we have used um, that things too many times or we have seen that, that icon, that picture so many times that we know we have learned what it means. Mm? So in designing our user interface, we can also build on the, the shoulder of, of this history and the usage that we have, for instance, of the web. Mm? Uh, so here we have two examples. Uh, the first one is the, the sidebar, or uh, hold sidebar, actually, of uh, the finder or macOS. Uh, and it's clear which of these voices so actually, no, actually, this is the iTunes. Uh, it was iTunes. Um, it's clear what you obtain mm, when you click on something like that. You want movies? The second icon. You want applications? Last but one. You want audiobooks? It's there. You want music? It's the first one. I it's clear, and also the pictures more or less identify things that we recognize. Mm? We recognize the, the, the notes as an uh, icon for music. We are used to. Mm? And also we recognize the, the film as an icon for the movies, even if currently probably movies do doesn't use film anymore. But we used to these kind of pictures, this kind of metaphor. And also here, This is a printing, right? Of a, I don't know which application, PowerPoint or Acrobat probably. Uh, the metaphor to understanding what I'm printing is the preview of the page. 
because I can change something here. And as I change things here, the preview updates. And why this is a good metaphor? Because everybody, well, well you need this to print, right? So you need, in the end, this will be on paper. And the metaphor is the representation on what you will obtain, that is the piece of paper. And we are familiar with paper. Because, well, first it will be printed, so we, we see what, what will happen after. And if, if I want to put more than this, I can change here, I can experiment also. So here, uh, uh, pages per sheet, one of three. Hmm? I can put three of these. If you want more, I can change, I can see the result. If it's too small the text, too large, I can change something. I can change the zoom level, I can change how many of these lights are in the page. And I see preview, it's, not no, it's nothing that I need to understand, to think, to, to think too much because it's the page. I've seen, I see what, what happened. Hmm? And it's a clear metaphor because we, we already know how a piece of with a page, page, a piece of paper is how it works. Hmm? So in this case, actually, is bringing the real world within a software hmm? because they are bringing the page, the piece of paper within a computer software. So exploit familiarity. Hmm? As designer and as evaluator, look for familiarity. Familiar metaphor, mm? files, paper, folders, highlighter, etc. Familiar language, look for jargon, look for acronyms, look for acronyms that are not explained. Mm? Uh, clearly, acronyms and jargon that could be unknown to the user. Again, if it's an application for medicine, maybe it's correct to have some specific jargon because it's a language that doctor use or nurses use and you, you cannot not use that but it's something for a more general population you you should probably avoid that other kind of jargon similarly familiar categories and familiar choices hmm? for instance explain the meaning of the error message what happened hmm? what are the consequences and most importantly, what can you do hmm? in a simple way? If you tell me there is an error because the system do this, this is what happened. Okay, and w now what happened? What I can do? Hmm? And I say there is an error because the system do that and the consequence is that you lost all your data. So now it's clear what happened it's clear the consequence, and then if you write a goodbye, you probably don't make anybody happy. Hmm? And so the best way is the system generates an error, you lost your data, and their options are cry, have a backup, write to us, something. Hmm? Give the next available step for the user, and in a simple way. So again, something that the user can understand, that your user can understand. That again, if you're doing something for a developer, you can also explain errors in a way that are different than if you're doing the same thing, so generating the same error for a person that never have seen one line of code in their own life. Hmm? Because the knowledge, the starting point is different. User control and freedom. User often choose system function by mistake. People are a mess, typically. We make mistakes, we make slips. We, we will at a certain point, for sure. Uh, so when we did this error with these slips, we need a clear emergency exit, a quick way to recover, an easy way to recover, to leave the state in which we reach out by making an error uh, without going through an extended dialogue, without doing too much work. I click there, oh God, I click there, it was 
a mistake. Now you have to do 11 different steps before going back to the home page. And if you reopen the application, you will be stuck here until you do the 11 different steps. So it's too much for a sleep for my user. And typically, this means supporting undoing or redoing, like in, in text editors. So you see, here you have, uh, well, here there is also visibility, especially in this one, uh, the red one. But there is user control and freedom. Look at that search, for instance. You can actually search for everything. You are just interested in finding uh, developers and who cares about the other things. You can just click here on developers and click on find. If you clicked on the search for error, you just have two ways to get rid of this. One is clicking cancel here, three actually. One is clicking cancel here, one is clicking cancel here. One is clicking probably on the other tab. And maybe also clicking on the page outside of menu. We'll get rid of this window. So here there is a lot of freedom and yet control. Mm? Because the user is in control. I clicked here for error. I have at least three different uh, actions to do. Two of them clearly specified, cancel and cancel. But even if I, I'm interested in searching, I have a lot of options. Not too much, probably the right one that I want. Mm? Li like I would like to search for developer or designers or both. And who knows, I have free text. Mm? Uh, I don't know how it match, but they have free text. And the city, maybe while you type, it appear an autocomplete that help you to write the right cities or write uh, keywords. Mm? And you can find there is a button that says find collaborator. So again, user control and freedom. Suggestion for you and for the evaluator in thinking about possible problem. Uh, for the designer, for the creator, always provide a back or equivalent button. Should be a way to go back, to cancel the action and go back to the previous stage. And for the evaluator, just not to forget that this also is something that the evaluator should use is look for a back function, mm, a button, a way to cancel the current operation. And allow user to explore different path when possible. Mm. So if you have clearly one shot wizard, mm, well like the one that you have when you install some mobile application, say, okay, I'm going to tell you step by step what the application is going to do. And this is a linear path. And this clearly, you cannot really explore different path in that moment because you have to do those steps. You have to register and you have to provide this information. You cannot provide other information or doing other things. You need to register before doing that. Mm. You need to insert your address before you, we need to, we can deliver something to your home. Otherwise we cannot. So th th there, there is not really alternatives, mm. but in most of the case, the user, like in the, in the search uh, window, should be able to explore different alternative path mm, to reach their own goal. Mm. Um, here there are other uh, examples. Uh, for instance, here in this, mm, you see uh, other mm, help in a way for the user, mm, in which the user can pick the total, can write the formula, can cancel the, the formula, but also the formula is linked by with colors. B2 is actually quantity because they are both blue. And price is orange like C2. And here the formula, you can confirm, you can cancel, not delete, go back to the formula, etc. Mm. Uh, consistency. User should not have to relearn everything from scratch every single time that they go to a different website or application. Mm? Should not have to wonder whether different word, situation, or action means the same thing across platform and within the same website. Mm? So if you're in the website, let's say in your application, you have search in one page and find in another page, one of the two should change. 
mm, if they are for searching something in the website. Mm? Because the same thing, the same words should mean the same things. The user should not wait, wonder, wait. It was searched before, now it's fine. There is a difference if the difference is not present clearly. Mm? And when you work for a certain platform, a mobile application, Android, iOS, desktop computer, Windows, Mac, or uh, Linux web, follow the convention that exists on the platform. Mm? So in Android, for in, in, in on, on, on iPhone, for instance, you have a different way to go back mm? in, in a system level than on Android. And this is conventions that are different uh, across the platform. Mm? And so if you do something for that, you should follow the convention of different platform, even for doing the same action. And here, mm, there is a, a good example for this. Maybe it, it's a bad example for other, but for this is a good example. These are old, but they are, are still present now in the Office software. Mm, they are different application. One is probably Word, the other one is probably PowerPoint, but there is familiarity again there is consistency. So if you go, if you learn how to use Word, you know that you have a this tabbed area mm, with home, insert, page layout, with some labels, and inside the label you have some boxes with options made in a certain way. And if you open PowerPoint for the first time, being an expert Word user, you find the same metaphor. You find the same kind of things. You find a tabled area with boxes inside and with icons inside that are very close, in some way identical to the one on words. And if you open Excel, you find the same. Mm? So consistency, not only inside the, the software, but also across a family of connected software. In this case, it's the suite. It's the office suite that has consistency in their own product. Mm? So that this is very good so that the user know if the user learned how to use one, can use the other one. Mm? Because it can transfer the knowledge that he acquired without relearning from scratch. Mm? And this was so good that Microsoft started that, I don't know how many years ago, but it's still in the Office suite. Uh, a slightly different version, but the same metaphor, tabbed interface with icons, with boxes, still in all the Office product, because it works because people are accustomed to now. Hmm. So suggestion, again, look at this from both perspective, you know, the creator and evaluator. Consistent layout. Hmm. So are the navigation always on the top of the page or it moves during the, the navigation of the page? In some pages in the top, in some pages in the bottom. And is it the, which is the, which is the, um, standard for the platform. Mm? So on the web, you typically have navigation on the top, not on the bottom of the page, mm? or in on the left, or on the top and in the left, or on the right, but never, almost never, only at the bottom. Mm? So this is also standard from the, com from it's a convention mm? that you have. Uh, position for confirmation buttons. If you always have OK on the left and cancel on the right, keep them in that position for the entire application. And in general, look at where these buttons are in other applications. Uh, consistency meaning, especially for OK, cancel, yes, no. Mm? Uh, do you want to interrupt task? Uh, do you want to interrupt this? OK, cancel. I can cancel and to interrupt the task. Maybe it's generating thinking for the user. So clear way to, uh, consistent clear way to communicate information. And categories, list of name, geographical regions, cities, etc., should be taken from standard vocabularies. Mm, you should not came up with a different way to represent cities because there are the standard way to represent cities in a user interface. Mm. And here are example for the, the, the level for this is about consistency and about also doing a better version. Mm? 
So do you want to run the software? Okay, cancel. This is bad. Because it's the answer. So if you speak, do you want to run the software? The other person say cancel or say no. So it's I in the end, it's clear. It, it do its work. But you don't naturally answer cancel to the question, do you want to run the software? Mm? So better is no and yes. Do you want to run the software? Yes or no? Better, mm, because it's something that you, you experiment. Mm, you, you will ask and you will answer. A better version from this is acceptable. A better version of, th of this is making everything more explicit. Avoiding mistakes, avoiding preventing, trying to prevent mistakes, trying to prevent uh, slips. Mm? Because if the question is, do you want to run the software? But instead of that, if you have, don't you want to run the software? You change the, the sentence, but not the, the meaning of the button. So if the question is negative, for any reason, you can do a mistake. Or maybe if you have encountered three menus before, that say a negative, that ask you a negative question, and this is positive, you will probably click on the wrong button. Mm. This is more explicit. Mm. Because no matter what is the question, you cannot mistake, because it's run or don't run. So it, it's clear, mm. it's way clearer than the other. It's explicit. And they are the same button, with more or less the same text in it. So it's not a strange, over something that you change a lot. It's just the label from three letter to two letter from locate to three for run, and actually for six letter for cancel to seven or don't run. Mm. So not big changes, but increase clarity and avoiding errors, which is the next um, heuristic, er error prevention. Mm. Even better, the good error message they explain what happened, how to solve it, and which are the consequences. Uh, it's careful design which prevent problems to occur in the first place. So if its operation is dangerous and the user cannot do that, don't allow to do that. If in that moment cannot be done, should not be done, must not be done. Hmm? So eliminate error prone condition or check for them. Present user with confirmation. I want to delete everything. I want to erase my database. Are you sure? So that the user has like, yes, I want to delete or no, I changed my mind. Something clear, explicit. Mm. Otherwise, oh yes, I, I, I delete instead of oh, click on save, I click on delete this icon next to I delete all my database. And I have no confirmation, no way to go back maybe even. So, all of these help to prevent data losses, prevent clutter, prevent confusion, preventing bad inputs. You can also prevent bad inputs and unnecessary constraint. Mm. Don't ask for something that you already have or for which a default exists, or at least provide the default. And if the user wants, it can change the default. Mm. But at least provide that. And well, these are, are simple er messages, mm. simple example. So in the first one, why there is pre error prevention? Because the update button is disabled. You cannot submit a post if you don't write something. So I'm preventing the user to do the error of submitting an empty uh, post. Because if he need to, the user needs to write something before pressing update. And same here. The primary action is big, is green, is a button. The secondary action, that is cancel, is not big, green, and a button. It's not even a button. It's something totally different, yet understandable, because it's a link, and there's a cancel. So also visually, you know that the primary action is different from the secondary action. Whatever is written in, in those button, in those link. So it's easy, it's easier. If you had two buttons, green, one with submit, one with cancel, it's easier to, to make an error. But here, 
it's more difficult because they are actually very different also aesthetically. And there, there was another example. Uh, six, recognition rather than recall. Mm, you already have probably listened about this. Minimize the user memory load by making object, action, and option visible, also linked with heuristic number one. The user should not remember information from one part of the other of the website uh, or to the dialogue, from one dialogue to, to the other. Instruction for the user system should be visible or easily retrievable. Mm? So one example is the autocomplete while coding. You don't have to remember, recall, everything but you recognize mm, i remember that it was a function that started with st and here the list so i can recognize which is the right one i don't have to remember all the c no, no i don't know the javascript i don't know what is this php probably uh function that exists with the st but i can look at it and also phones are another wonderful example of recognition because you see the list of fonts on your program, in your application, but you also recognize, you don't have to forget, oh yes, but the bank got it. How does it appear? Wh well, you, you see how it appears. You don't have to remember the appearance of all of these because you see, you rec recognize. I want a, a bulk uh, font, uh, so bank got it, seems good, I can select it. Okay, and here, and here there is another example. Um, of recognition instead of recall. Hmm? So this is text editing, search and replace in Visual Studio Code and in uh, BI probably. Mm. This is the fancy way for replacing and searching and replacing for and replacing and with or. And there is no recognition here. You have to remember what you need to write. Or you have to go to look on Google or on Stack Overflow what you have to write to do that operation. There is no recall at all. In Visual Studio Code, they enable the same thing and you just write what you want, and there is a button here. It also have a tooltip to say replace all. So you don't have to remember clearly all this, but you can just use the user interface. It is the same level of power. You can really do the same thing between this line here and that, identically. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also have other option here in Visual Studio Code because it's quite adaptable. But you don't, you don't have to recognize. You have, sorry, to, to recognize, yes. You have to, to recognize the button, the icons, what to write, the interface, not to recall that you have to say to write colon, G, etc. So suggestion, avoid calls. Avoid like L for lecture, uh, EA for exercise in the room, in the class. Uh, avoiding asking for unnecessary or premature information, or again, if you are an evaluator, look for unnecessary or premature information. Provide preview, code preview, uh, page preview, order summary, itinerary, etc. Hmm? Or things like um, Visual Studio Code. Flexibility, hmm? accelerator. Accelerators are things like shortcut that are not really useful or seen by the novice user, but appreciated from for the expert user. Mm? So if you want to save, you have to press Command S or Control S, copy and paste, Control C, Control V. These are accelerator. It's nothing that you cannot do by clicking somewhere on the page, but they're accelerator. And enable flexibility and efficiency of use because for expert user, they can do something more quicker than looking in menus. Mm. So again, give control and freedom to the user also, in this case. Mm. 
So flexibility is the default option, like the co copy and paste in the menu, plus options to do something else. Mm? Uh, exploit background information for providing more information. Mm? I have a calendar, I have to put a meeting, and be I can see a weather forecast for that place where I can go, so that I can plan better my, my meeting. Mm? Uh, proactivity, email software that tell you mark as spam um, or propose unsubscribe for a mailing list. So give suggestion, give flexibility. Mm? Recommendation and provide relevant information. Aesthetic and minimalist design, these apply less to your paper prototype clearly, but the idea is that dialogue should not contain information which is irrelevant or not used. Mm? So every extra information that you provide is more work for a user uh, and compete with the relevant information. So if you, to accomplish a task, you have uh, important, useful information and noise, you are making the task more difficult thanks to the noise. Mm? So get rid uh, of the noise, be minimal in that sense. Keep the, the information central, the important information central and the first uh, visible, um, much visible. Mm -hmm. So look here, the timesheet, you have just the date, the activity for the timesheet and spots for writing how many hours I spent on that activity on that day. Simple, I don't have much of information. And also the activity is one line, it's not 11 pages. Maybe from the activity I can go and see the, the full activity, but here the task is filling up this table. Not a lot of information, unless it's necessary. Hmm? Well, I, I already said that. Uh, keep high signal to noise ratio, not exaggerate with colors, fonts, background, animation, borders, dividers. If there is a simple way to do that, probably it's better, if there is, if there is clearly. Clear inf key information, especially on the website, must be above the fold, so in the first part of the web page, and accept the redundant way of entering the same information. And don't have, uh, don't fear to get rid of feature if they are outside the core functionality of that page, of that um, interface. Nine, help user recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. Similar to some example that we have seen before about uh, feedback. Mm? So here, choose a username. If you write Bert, it say Bert is already taken. Mm? And say, which is the problem? Bert is already taken. What I can do? Please provide a different username. Or click here and we're going to suggest a username for you. Something that is actionable. Mm? And this is, uh, I think, uh, 404 in a web page, but instead of saying 404 not found, contact the owner of the website, it say, oh no, it seems that the page you were trying to find on web website is not around anymore. The problem, what can you do? Report it to me so that I can check if it's actual a problem or go back to the home page, you go back to the categories to look for other things that, that you can do and that are similar. Mm? This is the same as saying not found, but is more actionable for the user and recognize that there is an error, a big O oh no that is red and that help to diagnose and recover, mm, which is the next step that the user can do. So make error easy to identify with colors, with font, introduce incoherence to highlight the errors if needed. As for the feedback, make the problem clear, the cause, the location, and a possible solution. Suggestion, show a path forward, propose an alternative, mm? write a new username. You cannot do anything else than to close this tab, but say the user something. Don't abandon the user in, in your user interface, in your program. Finally, help and documentation. Even if it's better to have a system without documentation, self-explainable, sometimes it's not possible. Mm? So it's fine to have help, it's fine to have a documentation, and it might be necessary to have that. Uh, but when you have help and documentation, that should be easy to search, easy to find, and again, understandable, and listing concrete steps for reaching your goal. Mm? 
and it should not be a book, a 1,000 pages book for documentation. Mm? And here, an example, you just have this question mark here that open eight screens to show you how to use picnic colleges. Mm? And you see, okay, making colleges has never been easy, next. And then it show you how to create col colleges with this uh, helping. So it's guiding the user, helping the user fulfilling the goal, the main goal of this program is creating colleges, so they are doing this interactively. Hmm? So, provide example. In documentation, four complex choices. In the page, wizard, suggestion if needed. Provide tips, and if needed, provide pop-ups to point to change in the UI or something like this an explanation, okay, which one is right for me? There are options there, but this is the explanation of the workshop, or the option. You can select Windows when this happens. You can select SNMP for this other context, and you can select SSH if you are in this situation. So give the user help, if the user needs help, maybe the user didn't need. And well, and then avoid two opaque terms and condition on the web page. Summarize if possible. Avoid legal, two legal term. In your prototype, don't waste time doing the term and condition. But in a real application, clearly yes. So these are the ten heuristics. Mm? Again, this is a quick overview. Some of them are clearly overlapping with guidelines. You have these also these videos and the, this web page. We are going to give you the list of, of um, some material to get started with the risk evaluation in the next few days so that you can start reading the content lab four and the template for Meister 2 that includes the paper prototype and the risk evaluation so that you can have a starting point and then you will have something to prepare to finalize your paper prototype but also to prepare maybe the task or the scenario, the information that you want to share to the evaluator, the who is doing the evaluator and who is doing the observer and who is uh, doing the, the computer for moving pieces in the paper prototype when the evaluator tap on the various part of the user interface. But all of these will be soon, uh, soon, say tomorrow or the day after on online, hmm? on the website. And we have done for now, let's see, Let's meet in a few minutes in the lab for group one.